Well, hello, everybody. <clears throat> I know I'm looking kind of rough. I've been sick for the last, I don't know, week, ever since our last broadcast. So if I sound a little weird and I look a little strange because I don't have on makeup or earrings, <clears throat> that's why I'm back from the dead. <laughs> anyway, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to come on and let you guys know um, I had put a note up that our my last video that I did, I accidentally deleted it. Um, I wanted to change the picture on it and asked me if I wanted to change the picture. And I said, yes. And it asked me if I wanted to delete. I said, yes, because I thought they were asking me about the picture anyway. So I ended up deleting the whole thing. That was kind of weird because I've been doing this for several years and that's never happened like that where it deleted the whole video rather than um, what I was trying to do. So I wanted to come on here <clears throat> and I know you didn't get a notification or anything that I was coming on. I just felt like while I had some energy and I was able to talk a little bit without getting out of breath <clears throat> that I would come on and explain to you guys what happened with that last video. And uh, to let you know that uh, I hadn't forgotten about part two. I just don't know when we'll get to part two. But I want to talk a little bit about the, the sickness that I have had. Now, I had some people ask, you know, was I tested? No. Um, I'm 63 as of yesterday. And I never had to go to the doctor to find out if I had a cold always knew when I had a cold, right? So I didn't I didn't feel the need to get tested. I don't care what kind of cold it is, right? You just do what you need to do when you have a cold. So that's what I've been doing. However, um, I think what is happening is that some people are waiting until they get very, very, very sick before, you know, till they're feeling really bad before they do anything about it. And, um, I'm not one that likes to spend my time on my back with a thermometer stuck in my mouth in the bed feeling miserable. So um, when I first started feeling um, kind of rocky, um, I got I just got on it right away. My guess is that <clears throat> had I be based on what I'm going through right now, my guess is if I hadn't got on it, when I got on it, it would have turned into pneumonia. Um, and the reason that I say that is because um, my my chest is congested, but it's not nearly as congested as it was two days ago or three days ago. And that's because of the things that I have been doing. Now, I'm not a doctor. But like I said, I have been living a while. So there's some things that I, I know to do. Um, and also, you know, you guys know that I have been working on some homeopathic things because I was trying to get away from um, typical pharmaceuticals. Now, I realize also that there are some situations where homeopathic medicine may not be as strong as it needs to be to fight whatever it is you need to fight. Okay. In my case, I'm just saying that where I'm able to come off of a pharmaceutical and use a more natural approach, that's what I prefer to do. So that's what I've been working toward. Now, <clears throat> having said that, let me say that uh, what I've been doing concerning this is um, I had some, um, homeopathic stuff that I made. Um, I did not know if what I was dealing with was bacterial or if it was viral. So I was taking some herbs and stuff that I made a tincture with um, that had oregano, thyme, and I can't think of what the other herb is in it um, that I made as a tincture to take it. And I was doing that. And I was also taking a lot of garlic. I was using dehydrated garlic. I was using um, processed garlic, all that kind of stuff, which is an antibacterial and an antiviral. So I was trying to approach it from both sides. Um, 
just to make sure that whatever I was dealing with, I could knock it out. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm still dealing with a little bit of congestion, but I, this is what I want to say about this. In my case, because I felt the congestion coming on, then I kind of got on it right away, you know. Now, I think what happens with people is they, like I said, they wait until they're feeling really, really bad and they can't hardly stand it anymore. And they're so sick, they have to go to the hospital. And I just wasn't going to do that. I'm not going to no hospital. I don't trust hospitals. Um, I think they're actively killing people. <laughs> so, because, and they're getting paid to do it. So that's my opinion. Um, if you think the hospitals and doctors or the cat's pajamas, help yourself. I don't trust them. You know, uh, money does strange things to people. And um, I mean, really strange things. Money will bring up, bring out corruption in your heart that you didn't know was there. So somebody offer you enough of it, you'll sell your mama for a dollar. And um, so I don't trust hospitals at this point. I've lost confidence in the medical community as a whole. There are some doctors that I do trust, but I'm not their patient. Right. Like I've consulted with some homeopathic and holistic doctors and I've taken their advice on certain things and it has worked for me. Um, I'm just leaning more toward natural, natural things. And um, but I'm trying to balance it also with some unnatural things, some pharmaceuticals that might be necessary. Now, as of right now, <clears throat> my husband gave me some. I don't know what that stuff was. Dayquil or whatever in a this capsule thing. I don't know. Anyway, um, but I found that what I really needed was some type of an expectorant, something to to loosen my chest so that pneumonia did not set in. And um, so he looked up a doctor named Dr. Eric Berg, who had a video that he had done and put on YouTube that talked about um, uh, inhalants that you can do. And it was a combination of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, garlic, uh, garlic oil, black seed oil, I believe it was some, uh, natural salt, sea salt, and a couple other things that you put he says to use it in a nebulizer. I didn't have a nebulizer, but let me tell you what I did have. <laughs> I did have a tabletop humidifier that a mister that was letting out a little bit of mist here and there, a little bit of mist here and there. And the idea is to deeply inhale that to get it into your sinus and down into your lungs to keep the mucus from solidifying so it doesn't turn into pneumonia. So what I did was my husband had that little thing sitting on the side. He had put the salt and, and all that uh, in the water. And I added a drop, one drop of peppermint oil to it. And then, you know what I did? When the steam, when the mist started coming, I took a straw and just like that because I didn't have a nebulizer. But that's just like a nebulizer because you just put it on your mouth and inhale deeply. So I took a straw and I just inhaled as deeply as I could and held it there. Now, unlike vaping or something like that, if you do that, ain't no smoke going to come out. Okay, it's just going to, it's just water. So it's going to stay in. But those different oils help coat the lungs and break up any mucus that could be in there that could turn to pneumonia. That's what makes it turn to pneumonia. It gets stuck, right? And, and you will eventually suffocate. So if you go to a hospital and you have not followed the current policy that's being pushed. They treat you very badly. Okay. I'm just telling you, they, they, they don't like people that aren't towing the line and doing what they're told. Um, if you, if you, you're going to have to read between the lines here, if you haven't done what, what the big demand is that the whole world does right now, so that things can get back to normal, you know, after 15 days to slow the spread and all that. And we're two years into it. Well, if you haven't done what they told you to do and you get sick and go into the hospital, good luck with that. OK, they, they 
they will treat you very badly and then they will try to kill you. And that's just the truth. So, um, and it's sad. And and the reason I'm saying that is because I know of a few people that that has happened to, and um, they're not here to talk about it anymore. And they were not, uh, they did not toe the line, but they did wait. They just kept trying to push through it, but they weren't doing what they needed to do to protect their loans. So I'm not all the way through it. I just want to let you guys know I ain't gone either. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm working through it. Um, I made my own expectorant. And as long as you could keep that coming out of your lungs and out of your sinus, you will be, you'll probably be just fine. That's what's really uh, killing people with this pneumonia. And so um, don't let your lungs fill up. Now, years ago, <coughs> I think it was <clears throat> 2012. I had that H1N1, and let me tell you, that that thing, now that almost did kill me. That was terrible. I almost drowned. My lungs filled up so badly until I was, every time I coughed, there was nothing coming out but water. I mean, it was literally just water spilling out of my lungs. I had never seen anything like that. I didn't feel sick in my stomach. I don't know that I had fever. I don't think I ever got fever with that. But my lungs just kept filling up with water, filling up with water. And um, uh, I called my doctor because I we were here and I had to get back to Canada. And I was thinking, oh, my God, if I'm sick like this, they're not going to let me cross the border. And I called my doctor and um, she told me, she says, I think this is what you have. So then when we finally did get across the border, try to act as normal as possible, I was like, oh, God, don't let me cough while the border agent's talking to me. And we got across the border. And as soon as we got across the border, um, we contacted Chris's doctor. And uh, he wanted us to come in right away. And he sent us for chest x-rays because he thought we both had pneumonia. We did not have pneumonia, but we did have, he, and I told him what my doctor had said on the phone. He says she nailed it. He said, that's exactly what that is. And um, we didn't know. We, we were on the road and had found out that all these people behind us in Oklahoma had died from this thing. And well, I tell you, we dodged a bullet. So I'm dodging one more time. Anyway, if you're on, make sure you uh, say where you're signaling from, because I can see that you're on. I just don't know who you are and where you're signaling from. <coughs> Anyway, I want to let you guys know that <clears throat> I'm doing I'm doing better than I sound. <laughs> and forgive me if I get a drink of water here and there. Ugh. I'm trying to stay hydrated. <clears throat> I did have a fever um, for a day or two, but it was only like. <clears throat> A hundred, a hundred point one, something like that. And then it went down to 99.5 and now it's normal. And I think that was probably the worst of it as far as how I was feeling. My ribs felt like somebody beat me with a baseball bat, but that was from all the coughing. And I've had that happen before just with a regular uh, flu bug, you know. So I this does not feel like anything that I've never had before. This feels like something I've had before, you know, like a regular flu or whatever. So, <clears throat> so I think the purpose of my video today is, is to say, I'm not one that buys into every time somebody gets a sniffle, then is this variant or is that variant or is this thing or is that, you know, this is just a regular seasonal flu, I think is what I have. So, um, if it was anything different, I would know because I would feel it. I don't feel anything different than what I've ever felt with a flu. Um, the only flu that I ever had that felt different was in 2012 or 13, whenever that H1N1 thing was out. That was very different. That was the weirdest thing. Uh, we didn't know what was wrong. We knew something was wrong. I had never experienced that before. Um, I... Um, yeah, I had never experienced that before. I never got fever. 
I was absolutely exhausted. I had every time I coughed, all this water came out of my lungs and it was just clear water. It wasn't mucus. It was just water coming out of my lungs. I don't know where the water was coming from. And then I looked that up and it was saying, and this was new to me, that your body will produce copious amounts of fluid trying to flush out what it feels or detects as a foreign body. So I had a virus for sure. And so my body was manufacturing all this water, trying to flush this thing out. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, so um, I guess the immune system does work. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of help. Anyway, I just wanted to come on to tell you guys, I'm coming through it. Um, I'm not all the way through it, but I am coming through it. And um, um, I was able to get into the shower and freshen up and all that because last night I woke up in a puddle. I'd broken out in a sweat. And it used to be, you know, when I was younger coming up, my mom, if I got sick, she had this thing about making me sweat. <coughs> and I'm thinking, why you want to make me sweat? She had it in her head that if she could make us sweat, it would, it would break a fever. It would sweat the, the toxins out of us. I guess that's what what her mindset was about it. Anyway, so I woke up in a puddle and I wasn't doing anything trying to make myself sweat. I was just sweating. Oh my God. I woke up in a puddle. Oh, so, but I feel better today than I have with the exception of this weird um, feeling in my chest. Like I said, I'm still working on getting that out. I made my own nebulizer <clears throat> with natural um, remedies and it is working. So, um, but I ain't want to just leave you guys hanging. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm doing okay. So thank you. Those of you that prayed for me, <coughs> Mr. Vikings doing okay. He was, um, I saw him, he started hitting the, the homeopathic stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, we can't both be sick at the same time. And he's been taking care of me, helping to take care of me bringing me um, chamomile tea and things like that. So I really appreciate <laughs> appreciate him doing that. And other people have been praying for me and texting and checking on me. So thank you for that. And um, I'm going to sign off because it's getting hard to talk. <clears throat> but I just want to let you guys know I was okay. Please leave your comments in the comment section. And uh, I'll see you guys the next time I come on. Thanks for um, your concern and all that. And hopefully I'll look better and feel better the next time you see me. Uh, in the meantime, I'll see you next time I come on. Take care.